also Ahi Ayman is glad to be here because of the efforts of one Ummah. Alhamdulillah, many of you are now aware of one Ummah and the community efforts that are made, they are making for all of the, the masajids and the people in Southampton. Alhamdulillah, Ahi Ayman has a special relationship with Brother Rahim, no. who is an instrumental figure in that one Ummah. These programs, these events, these hikes and everything else that takes place under their name, under their banner, are only done by donations that are made by yourselves. So inshallah, they have a team of several people that will be outside. So please, once the, the complete the program is complete, then do, uh, do donate whatever you can to them. Speak to them, ask them about their, progr their programs, look at their mailing list, their WhatsApp list, and inshallah you will be aware or you will be told of any future events and programs, inshallah. Now without further ado, inshallah, I'll pass it on to the brother, inshallah, you can Just sign in us. Brothers are requested to inshallah listen with the intention of um, understanding and implementing and inshallah making it a means of saving your lives. Inshallah, Jazakallah khair Habib. Bismillah ar Rahim. Bismillah ar Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want us. I want to start off by saying, all praise be to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most powerful. It's only Him we worship, only Him we bow down to, and only Him we turn to when we're in need. And also like to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and sisters, I'm not going to speak for the sisters because this is something I haven't seen. But based on what the Sheikh himself said, wallahi, we have to have better manners, better etiquette as a Muslim. This is not from our character to act like this. I'm a nobody. At the end of the day, I'm not a alim, I'm not talib al ilm, I'm not a scholar, I'm not an imam. Let's make that clear. I'm here to make you guys know and to spread the awareness of the streets. And based on, on my way coming here, I heard a lot of things. And there's quite a few men here from London that are actually come into your area to, to sell drugs. They're trapping. And this is the reality of the Muslims today, nowadays you've got the Kuffars making a joke out of us. And we don't blame them, we blame ourselves. We can't turn to them and tell them, look at the way you're bashing us, you're Islamophobic. No, we are Islamophobic before them. Because we're not going by the characteristics of a Muslim. We're not following the Quran and the Sunnah and upon the best of understanding of the companions to our best of our ability. We have neglected our path. And like the Sheikh mentioned, what is this? Screaming and I appreciate you man coming here. Wallahi I do. And I love every single one of you here. But let's be real man. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa didn't get this. So why should I? Why should a man of my background of experience and jahiliya should get this reception? I'm a nobody. If we don't even act like this excited to see our parents that there is a disease within our hearts. This is how we should be when it comes to our parents, let alone to a, a waste man of a speaker by the name of Aki Ayman. Let's make that clear. But alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you to come here for a reason. In order for you lot to make a difference with your community. Allahumma barak, I see many faces, many different nationalities, different shades of skin. This is what it means to be a Muslim man. Islam didn't come just for the Arabs, even though the language of the Qur'an is Arabic. Islam came to every single nation. You've got people that are becoming Muslims that I've never even, there's countries that I've never even heard of. Out of 192 countries in the world, or astaghfirullah, 96 countries, seven oceans, seven continents, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picked Islam to be within your hearts. And remember that. There is people that wake up as a Muslim, wallahi, by the end of the day, they're misguided. Why? Because they've made certain statements or they've done certain actions that takes them out of the fold of Islam completely. But some people wake up as a disbeliever. They did not know that today was the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to guide them to Islam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to let them be what? A Muslim. But who do we blame for those people that have been misguided, man? I was giving a talk yesterday. Subhanallah, there was a man, there was a famous, there's a, not even a famous, there's a, uh, a video that's going around on social media right now. 
And this video is of a gentleman, it's a man. A man that is chasing his teenage son through the streets of Luton. And this man, when he's chasing his son, he's trying to guide him, not guide him back to Islam, he's trying to guide him back to love and care and compassion. You know, these sort of things, because it's his son at the end of the day. And by the time he got to his son, this teenage waste man, I call him a waste man because God forbid I ever come across this guy, yeah? But the man decided to turn around, this teenager decided to turn around and face his father. In the moments where he faced his father, he ended up punching up his own dad. Muslim, by the way, Muslim. And do we neglect the bashing and the curse that our, that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is getting? Do you want to ride out on the man that's really dissing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do we want to ride out on the people that are cursing Allah? Look at the biggest insult that they gave Allah. Is that the Allah has a son. Forget just that. There's many other insults that have come towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But look at the insults of what? As the brother just mentioned, where's the brother that recited the Quran? Allahumma ba'a akhi. This, this is the Quran, akhi. May, may, may Allah bless you for that. Wallahi, some of us, the last time we, shished, we touched the Quran was actually in Ramadan. And let me tell you something, akhi. I'm looking at this Quran, akhi. It looks like it's got some sellotape on there. It looks like the brother's trying to keep it, keep it sturdy. But this is a Quran that you know that has been in use on a daily basis. But if I were to tell you right now that there's a kafir right now outside, he's spitting and dishing out the Quran and he's jumping on it, you men are all looking to ride out. Right? Yeah? yeah. Right, some half heart, some half hearted, yeah, you know. You're meant to ride out for this book of Allah, you feel me? But what, what, what about yourselves, my dear respected brothers and sisters? When was the last time you opened the Quran? Because you're disrespecting the Kitab Allah as much as they are, if not worse. You know why? Because there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed Islam within your hearts. And we neglect our journey with this beautiful book. So shout out to every single brother or sister that opens the Quran, even if it means one ayah that you read from this Quran. Wallahi, shout out to you. And also shout out to the brothers that are disrespecting the Kitab Allah. Shout out to you, man, bro. You're ready to ride out for the wrong things. You're ready to ride out for the brother that's sitting next to you because he's got a girlfriend problem or boyfriend problem. And Allah, a'udhu billah. Some of us are losing our way. And let me not get into those details, yeah? Because wallahi, there is times that is coming where people are calling me up saying, my bro, my brother's losing his mind. My brother has lost his way. And I'm like, Tim, you can talk to him about the deen. Inshallah, he falls in love with the deen again. Na'ak. My brother lost his way because now he has completely changed his sect completely. His sex completely. He's changed his gender completely. From a Muslim background. Some of you might be finding this funny, but any of us could fall into this. The more we're distanced from the Qur'an, the more we're distanced from following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the more we, the more we are, it, sorry, the more we actually start cursing one another because we're from a different race, cursing one another because we're from different culture. And I see this happen, and I, with all due respect, I don't know about your community too much, but alhamdulillah Rahim, Spoke a lot of good about your community, Allahumma barik. There's different races, different cultures coming together. But one thing that's killing our Muslims today is the fact of the matter is that Muslim fathers are neglecting their sons and their daughters in marrying someone outside their culture. Islam came to destroy this. And Islam came to give honor to the woman. And one of the stories, wallahi, that it brings tears to my eyes is that there was a companion, radiallahu anhu. Every single time he used to laugh, he used to smile, but all of a sudden, out of nowhere, his PTSD kicked in. 
And he used to remember there was one thing. He used to cry and cry and cry to the level where he used to go unconscious. He used to black out. So the other companions went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they and they told him about this companion. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to him, and my dear respected brothers and sisters, every time I mention the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, show him some respect by saying sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You feel me? And that's the least we could do for what that man did for us. So when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Heard of the story, he went to the man and spoke to him. So the man opened up to him, he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before Islam, I had a daughter. And he said, This daughter, as you know, the Arabs had this culture where they, if you had a daughter, you're dishonored. It brings shame to the family. But this is before Islam came, so let's make that clear. Before Islam came. And this man, he made a plan that he was going to lie to his daughter and his wife that he's going to go and take her up. He's going to take her out. So he told his wife, make sure you dress her up. Make sure you know you do her beard, do her hair. I'm going to take her out. And subhanAllah, while the mother was combing the hair and doing her, you know, making her make sure that she dresses nice and her hair is done properly, she started to cry. So the child, the daughter turned around and said to her mother, why are you crying, oh mother? Why are you crying? She goes, nothing, I'm just thinking about something. Just saying anything to take up the mind of, because she knows that her husband is up to no good. So before they went, the husband and wife spoke. And the, uh, 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 and the wife told her husband, do not break the trust. Do not break the trust. The amana, the amana, do not break it. So as the man's gone, taking the daughter out, bear in mind while the husband and wife were listening to her, speaking to one another, the daughter was hearing this. The daughter was hearing this. So the man was decided to have the intention of throwing his daughter inside the well to kill her because he is scared of bring, or making his daughter bring shame to the family where she's going to grow up, maybe commit zina, maybe marry to some next guy, Bring shame to the family, dishonor to the family. And the man was battling himself within himself. His heart was telling him, we're going to do it. His mind was trying to drift him away. He's like, no, I don't want to do it. So he was fighting battles within himself. As he got closer to the well, he threw his daughter inside the well. And the daughter was saying to her father, oh father, do not break the trust. And she was screaming it out, do not break the trust. Do not break the amana. And he could hear the voices going away and away and it's getting lower and lower and lower until the daughter landed in the well and she died. And Islam came to honor the woman. And when and when and this is and this is one of the moments where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he cried, he cried so much that his beard was drenched, drenched with his tears. And he said, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, if they were to, if they were for me to punish anyone, anyone before Islam, I would have started with you. I would have started with you. And look how Islam came to honor us and it came to honor our women. So shout out to the boys, bro. Shout out to you, bro, for dishonoring another man's daughter, for going out with her, for doing zina, for smoking, shisha, whatever it may be, bro. You're falling into those traps, Akhi. You've dishonored another man's daughter. So God forbid for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to dishonor your, your daughters, Akhi. And your sisters, because they will come to they will come to a time, Akhi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may test you with that same test. Why? Because now you're going around the corners, taking the girls to the park and doing every single sin under the sun. So shout out to you, bro. Kama didinu dudan, whatever comes you know, whatever goes around comes around, bro. It's gonna come back to buy. If it's not with you, Akhi, it's gonna come back to buy your kids. And if it's not with your kids, it's gonna come back to buy their kids. All because of this nasty trend that you set. 
the trend of being a, a zani, an alcoholic. There's brothers, but there's brothers that are celebrating birthdays, birthdays. And we don't even do that as Muslims. Let's put birthdays to a side, akhi. Man, them are making sure that on their birthday, they're drinking liquor. That they're smoking weed. Is this what Islam has come to, akhi? By Allah, I do not blame the non-believers for trying to destroy the Muslims. Look at yourselves, Ak. And you're the reason why our sisters are comfortable enough to live in a haram, being in a haram relationship. You know why? Because their cousins and their fathers, and I will say this, their fathers as well. Married men going around the corner, making sure you deal with other women. At the same time, their older brothers are being seen with other women. So do you really blame the sisters for going down this path of losing their virginity? And this is what's happening amongst our Muslims, bro. So we blame ourselves and don't you dare blame anyone other than yourselves for why the Muslims are being prosecuted because of their sins. Do you know who we've turned into? We've turned into the people of, Bad of, of the battle of uh, Uhud. The battle of Uhud, they were known as men. The men of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told them to be allocated on the mountains. He told them, do not come down from the mountains, even if you see us celebrating. Even if you see us celebrating. He said, remain on the mountains. But guess what happens? The brothers and sisters saw, sorry, the brothers on the mountains saw the archeries. They saw that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the remaining companions were cheering. They were excited. Yeah? Because they, they had the upper hand. So the, some of the companions decided to leave their position. You know why? Because they were chasing the dunya. They were gathering the swords and the gold and the shields and the beauty of what? Of the battle. So some of the companions left their position while some of them remained on the mountains. Do you know who we are out of those companions? The ones that left the position and went and neglected and ignored the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we came down. Because we didn't want to be left out. And in that moment, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got attacked by who? Khalid ibn Walid. He came with his horsemen around the back of the mountain, attacked the remaining companions on the mountain, killing them. And then they trapped the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the middle. And that, was, and that was the time where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost his uncle Hamza. And Brothers, there's a HD61 black Jaguar that's blocking other cars from leaving. Please remove that car. Get that moving. Get that moving, Akhi. Wallahi, the roads and the pavement have rights over you that you don't even know about. No disrespect to the brother, Akhi. But if he's if it's been put in a position where you are, you know, trapping other people in, as a Muslim, this is not for my etiquette. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Allahumma ameen. So where was I? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was trapped in the battle in the middle and this was the battle where we lost. And in that moment your beloved Prophet, your beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was hurt. They chipped his tooth. Companions around him were dying. All because of a certain group that neglected the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we have become like those companions where we chase this dunya and let me make it clear to every single person here Wallahi the more you chase this dunya the more it's gonna break your heart and I've been there I've lived it I've tasted it I've had the astaghfirullah al I've had the woman there I've had the cars I've had the money I've had this fame back in the day and subhanAllah, the more I try to stay away from the fame, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving it to me. And I don't want it. I'm not a clout chaser. I don't want this fame. Fame gets you killed. Fame works on this. You know this heart. 
It destroys it. And you know what women do? Women would rather chase a man with status than a man with money. Because how you are labeled in the eyes of society, she would rather have that. She doesn't give a damn if he's a broke guy. As long as he's got a status. Like these little hood, uh, the hood rats, you got the sisters chasing. The brothers that are rapping or trapping. Let's make it clear, Akhi. These women that are chasing you, they're going to speak against you in your maqiyama. And shout out to the brothers that are listening to these trappers, man. Bando baby, yeah? Screaming at a Z here and a Z there. Screaming at hard food, white food, brown food. You might as well make a new one called Avatar food, bro. Make it blue while you're at it. A'udhu billah. And this is one of the reasons why I never done drug dealing because I was scared of the backlash that I was going to get in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because every single person that you sell drugs to is going to do what? Is going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to vouch against you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the du'as of the oppressed, not just the du'as of the Muslims. So if you're selling drugs to John or Harry, and John or Harry's parents now, non-Muslim, are making du'a against you, God forbid you stand in front of Allah where their du'as are being accepted, akhi. Because of the drug dealing that me and you done. Because we're all. Because when you're drug dealing, akhi, we're drug dealing, akhi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa described this ummah as one body. So whatever you're doing, bro, it's affecting me. Your pain is my pain. Your tears is my tears. Your happiness is my happiness. So when you're trapping, akhi, we're trapping as a Muslim ummah all together. We're all in it. And this is something we're regretting, akhi, every single day. Now you've got Muslims, bro, Muslims, where the man doesn't even provide for his wife and kids. But what does he provide for? For his needs of addiction. And this is what's ruining our communities, bro. We come, instead of brothers coming together, putting our money, uh, uh, sorry, our money together and building one masjid in the ends, what do they do? They start off together being very, very well, good friends. They come to the masjid, they raise this masjid, and I know this isn't the case with this masjid, alhamdulillah, but brothers and sisters, they build a masjid like this, then, they, then guess what? They have a different of opinions on based on one hadith or one ayah. So the man, what does the man do? He calls the imam every name under the sun and decides to go across the road and build his own masjid. Is this what the Ummah has come to? I go to certain streets in London, East London, or certain streets in Luton and Birmingham. Wallah al Azim, there's about seven or eight mosques on the same road. The same road. There's disunity amongst our Muslim Ummah, bro. And it begins with us. There, if there is disunity amongst our households, bro, amongst our households, a Somali brother comes to me, Akhi. There is a family that I got married to, an Asian family. Her brothers and her fathers are attacking me. And he showed me the video. Because that sister got married into a Somali household, I see the video getting, the brothers getting wrapped up by three men. He's wearing a fob, a fob, bro, which is a uniform to every Muslim. And I'm not telling you to go outside and wear a fob, bro. It's not necessary. This form don't make me a proper Muslim, Akhi. This form doesn't make me a righteous Muslim. Let's make that clear. This beard doesn't make me a righteous Muslim. But it's a uniform to every single person that sees us. The man is in his form, Akhi. Getting wrapped up to the level where now you see his underpants. His vest. His form is off. Man, they are wrapping him up. Alhamdulillah, I wasn't there. And Alhamdulillah, the real lions of this um, Ummah wasn't there. Because God knows what they, what, what they would have done to them man there. So there's this unity. So, st so before you blame your local Imam, I don't know if you blame him, inshallah you don't. Before you blame your local Imam, before you blame the scholars, before you blame the Muslim leaders, 
Achi, blame yourselves. There is nothing that you're doing that is putting an impact on the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What are you doing with yourselves, bro? What are you doing with your lives? If your Quran has dust on it, you, ha you are a failure. If your Salah has rust on it, you are a failure as a Muslim. We come to the masjid because of a waste man speaker such as myself. When was Fajr the last time like this, bro? When was Dhuhr or Asr or Maghrib or Isha like this, bro? When? The Prophet Sallallahu stated, if you realize the na'mah, the blessings you will get of praying Fajr and Isha in the masjid as a jama'ah, you would crew to the masjid. Some of us live across the road, bro, and you don't even come to the masjid for Fajr, let alone Dhuhr, Wa Asr, Wa Maghrib, Wa Isha. And you want to be the man to say, yeah, bro, when Dajjal comes, bro, I'm going to be like that man that's going to spear him in half. Shut up, man. You can't even hold a bar knife, akhi. You're talking about you can hold a sword. Guess his mum to, to bar and jam the toast. A man that thinks he's ready for the biggest fitna that will ever come to the Muslim Ummah, bro. And every single prophet spoke about Dajjal. But do you know who's going to witness him? It's going to be us. It's going to be us. And the more we're away from the Quran and the Sunnah and upon the understanding of the companions and the Tabi'een, the more we're going to be failed as a nation. Someone came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was talking about he, you know, he was, he was scared for his ummah. So the companions mentioned, you know, why would you be scared? Hopefully we're going to be in numbers. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said we're going to be like the foam of the ocean. The foam of the ocean, meaning huge in numbers. But we're going to be like a table like this where the people are going to be picking at the Muslims. Killing them, raping them, torturing them. This is what's happening, right? The Middle East, Africa, Asia. Look at the Chinese Muslims that we all seem to forget about. What about them, Akhi? Everybody likes to talk about Palestine, Syria, Iraq, where I'm from. I understand, bro. I'm from Iraq. We suffered a lot. More than two million Muslims died. But what about the Far East Asia? The Rohingya Muslims, the Chinese Muslims, and they're all suffering because of our sins that we're doing behind closed doors. And I'm going to be clear, with all due respect to the Imam, to the committee, there's a disease that is happening within the Muslim youth today. It's not the music, which is a disease anyway. It's not the smoking, which is a disease anyway. Either you're smoking tobacco or nasty vaping. So shout out to the guys that do vaping, yeah? Because you, man, if you do your research, vaping is made from urine. Shout out to you, man, bro. This is why I don't share my food no more. I know it's sunnah, but man can't share the same bottle with certain man, bro. Well done to you, man, akhi. I ain't putting my lips on the same guy that smokes urine. So shout out to you, Akhi. But it's the disease of pornography. Pornography. Every man here has got a smartphone. And every man here, it takes one click to connect to Wi-Fi in order for, for you to go out of your way to get what? Get access to these nastiness online. I'm going to tell you this now, right now, right here. And this is a disease that even lies within married men. Married men. Wallahi, you're a scumbag and you're the lowest of the low. If you watch porn. You don't like my language, Akhi, the doors there. Or the Imam committee could take me and exclude me outside. I don't mind because this is respect for them in the masjid. But this is the reality of it. Some people say, oh, how comes this guy doesn't talk about it in private? Who else is going to talk about it, bro? Pornography. At the same time, I was listening to Abu Taymiyyah. He came here last week or so. He had a talk on, on a few days ago, on Friday. Abu Taymiyyah mentioned how lowering of the gaze, just lowering of the gaze, akhi, 
is so, is so important. He said there was a man and a woman inside a prayer hall, a masjid. The girl didn't lower her gaze, so the girl, shaitan, whispered in her head to go and start asking the brother some questions. The brother answered it without no, without no burden, without no hesitation of even looking at her, thinking that she's attractive. The girl got her answers, so she went back. The girl decided to come back again. Shaitan whispered a few more things in her head. This is what Butaymi was saying, so I'm paraphrasing, yeah? Subhan, I was hearing the story while I was upstairs changing my bag, so it wasn't, so I didn't make up a lot out of the story, yeah? But you already get the drift. So the girl came back, but the second time, the brother, mashallah, he's giggling and laughing, so, so now the shaitan's broken him. He's broken his comfort. He's broken him lowering his gaze. And he got so serious, just from not lowering your gaze, or keeping yourself to yourself, they ended up committing zina inside the prayer hall. Man, they must say, Astaghfirullah, brother, cuss me, bro. No, that's not me. In reality, any of us could fall into this, bro, including myself. Any of us could fall into this. We're not innocent. We're not innocent. We have desires. Our desires is what's there to destroy yourself. It destroys you, sorry. And it will destroy yourself too. And every single time we put, and this is something I want to mention, and I, and I try to mention it in every talk, yeah? There was a man from my community, from South East London. He had a sick illness and a sick disease of pointing fingers at everyone. Ah, oh, look at that man. His daughter is committing zina. Ah, oh, look at that man. His boy, his boy is a drug addict or a drug dealer or, or an alcoholic. Look at his wife, she's not even dressed appropriate, non-hijab, tight clothes. Actually, this is a man that actually studied in the Middle East, Islamic studies. But because of this illness within his heart and decided to point fingers at everyone, actually, when the time came, Allah tested him with the exact same thing. His wife left Islam, and even though she was fully covered, and became an addict to drugs. And I'm not talking about bunning weed, bro. I'm talking about injecting, akhi. You understand? I'm talking about sniffing, akhi. His daughter, astaghfirullah azim for using such language, but his daughter became the biggest whore in the ends. His son became a drug addict to the level where he was selling drugs to his own mother. This is what's happening amongst our Muslim community. So you see what happens when you point fingers at others, Allah will test you with the same thing. So I'm going to ask you again, there are certain sins that we fall into as Muslims that Allah hasn't exposed you yet. And some of you was like, you know what, Allah is not exposing me, so alhamdulillah, I'm going to continue. Imagine when Allah uses that against you in your maqiyama in front of every single living being, akhi. where you're going to be standing there when there's no shade. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to use this against you. So bear in mind, my dear respected brothers and sisters, your time is coming. Wallahi, your time is coming. And there's a hadith that mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come, there will come a time every single century, every hundred years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will revive, every century we will revive the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will revive them, and that train is coming. But the question is, are you prepared to jump on that journey of being someone that can benefit the other people? Are you going to jump on that train where you're going to benefit your own mom and dad? <coughs> because some of us, some of us are Muslims. Some of us are Muslims. Wallahi, there was a boy 14 years old, the same background as me, Kurdish Iraqi. He came to me. He says to me, I can't even make salah in front of my parents because they are so jahil. His parents are speaking against him because he's praying salah at home. And you're Muslims. 
Let me tell you something, my dear respected brothers and sisters, yeah? Islam is not a trend because it's become a trend nowadays. Brothers are rolling up their trousers to be above the ankle because it's becoming the trend. Even the kuffars are doing it. Well, why the kuffars are doing it better than us? They're rolling up their trousers more than us. Sunnah. The kuffar now have become a people that wear baggy clothes. Sunnah. Shout out to the brothers that are wearing tight up Nike, Nike tracksuits. They're like this, Akhi. Your tracksuit come. How can tracksuit come like leggings, Akhi? Or like you're wearing, like you're going to the gym. I don't know, back in my day, I'm 30 years old. Back in my day, when I was a teenager, the baggier your clothes, the more respect you get. Nowadays, the tighter your clothes, the more respect you get. tiff. Fix your wardrobe, brother, the same way you fix your heart. Fix up your wardrobes, man. And I'm going to go into this with shout out to the sisters as well, and I didn't want to get into them too much. But I like to attack the sisters too. Because the sisters don't understand the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. The honor that Islam has given you. The honor that Allah gave you directly of dressing modest. So I am going to attack you sisters. If you don't like it, I hope you brought some paracetamol to aid your feelings, if your feelings are hurt. You see, the Muslim sisters are the backbone of this ummah. And every single time I asked to come and do charity, because I asked, I wanted volunteers back in London, the first people to come forward are the sisters, to the level where even aunties would come with their young children and would say to me, yeah, amen, just give us a curtain and let us sort out the clothes. Let us sort out the tin foods. Let us sort out the toys that we're gonna be sending to Syria every single two weeks in a 40 foot container. It was the sisters that came forward. These are the backbones of the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The sisters today, Allahumma barik, the more interested about what they put on their face instead of what they sent to someone else. Their face is bombarded by makeup. A'udhu Billah. Their hand and their face is two different colors. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. No, honestly, wallah, I don't know what's going on. I'm not even here to make jokes about it. But you've gone to so far, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna shout out to the dayufs. The dayufs of our communities. I'm sorry if I'm here to hurt your feelings. How dare you sit down while your wife is on social media, live, putting her makeup on and you're there in the background giggling? Where's your shame, bro? Where's your haya, bro? You're not man enough to tell your wife how it is. G-check your wife, bro. Well, no, no, I'm being serious. G-check your wife, ak. Because even I myself get G-checked, akhi. But it's not G-check, I get Dean checked akhi. When I make a mistake at talks, or when I do certain things, I don't even go to my friends. I go to the people of knowledge, they sit me down and they Dean check me, Aki. Amen, what did you mean? And these people, they have wisdom. So they don't get onto me to put me down. They get onto me for me to learn from my mistakes. And this is what they do. These are your true brotherhood. And whatever you're going around, I come to your local imam. Sit down with him. There's certain things that your imam could break down to do your parents can't do. And what's happening with the Muslims? We're losing our deen. Wallahi, we're losing our deen. Look at the men that buried their daughters. Their daughters before Islam. And look at the honor that the Muslims have got through their women. But we forget that the sisters are listening to Cardi B, Kim Kardashian. I don't want to even start getting onto the sisters with a big platform on what they do, these influences. Because it, there's no point in me telling you what to do if your husband in the background is not telling you what to do and telling you to fear Allah. So I'm going to tell you this, my dear respected sister, if you're hearing this. Wallahi, Allah loves you. Allah cares for you. Allah has honored you. 
Turn back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Start wearing modest clothes. And don't walk around leaving your house with an abaya. The moment you turn around the corner, you open up your Superman abaya, you take it off, you put it in your bag, and Allah knows best. Like Allah doesn't see what's happening. But we love you. Even though us men are failing, I'm going to speak for myself. I don't know about no one else. I'm going to speak for myself. Even though I'm failing as a man from this ummah, at least honor this religion to your best of your ability. So I'm going to ask you, my dear respected sister, that Allah came to honor you, that Allah came to love you, and Allah made you the best of the people from this ummah. So make a difference, inshallah. Start dressing appropriately. Start wearing less makeup. Start getting rid of these flamingo eyelashes. Yeah? Astaghfirullah Azim, some say a bird had to die because of your eyelashes. A'udhu Billah. So fix up, sister. And at the same time, understand that the first people to ride or die for you will be me. And the lions of this ummah. If anything was to happen to you. And if you are in a haram relationship, sister, get rid of that waste man. Because he doesn't care about you. Nor does he have respect for you, nor does he have respect for your parents, nor does he have respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if he was serious about marriage, wallahi, 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 he would go to your parents. And this is something I use a lot because there was a couple that I met walking along the river at 11 o'clock, late night, looking at the time thinking, A'udhu Billah, what are these what are doing? My heart told me I needed to speak to this boy, so I called him over, Salaamu Alaikum, Alaikum as I was talking to him. I said to him, bro, if you, if this is your boy, it's astaghfirullah. If this is your girlfriend, akhi, fear Allah to your best of your abilities. And if this is your wife, akhi, it's 11 o'clock, there's acid attacks happening where people are throwing acid in your face, akhi, take her home. Take her home and be in the comfort of your household. For some reason, I gave him a number. For some reason, I gave him a number. The brother decided, he said, nah, are you mad? Are you dumb? Akhi, this is my wife, Akhi. Why are you trying to judge me? I said, Akhi, forgive me. Forgive me, Akhi. May Allah bless you. I gave him my number. Ten minutes later, he calls me and goes to me, Akhi, I put her in the Uber cab. Akhi, I'm sorry. She is my girlfriend. I'm sorry for wiling out. I'm sorry for doing this for them. Because bear in mind, Akhi, I'm not going to lie to you. I would have smoked him differently, yeah? If he ever wants to go head to head with me, yeah? May Allah bless you, because I'm good friends with him now. So, um... I said to the brother, Akhi, let's approach her family, Ak. So talking to him, talking to him, advising him for a good few months. And I was telling him to work on three things. Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever comes with it. The Quran, the Sunnah, the companions, the tabi'een, the ulama, the people of knowledge. Studying, going to the masjid. Do that. That's your first connection. Your second connection is your connection with your family, your mother, your father, your siblings, your uncle, your auntie. Work on that. So that, that's the second relationship that you need to be working on. Remember the first relationship is with Allah and whatever comes with the deen of Allah. Your third relationship is your relationship with yourself. Your re- Akhi, that's a big disrespect, Akhi. How dare you get the Imam to hold the phone? This is, this is my guy, Akhi. May Allah bless you. Habibi. I'm not getting on to you, Akhi. I love you for the sake of Allah, my bro. You wear glasses, I wear glasses. Spec gun. Yeah? Spec gun. Shout out to the brothers that wear glasses, yeah? May Allah bless you. I mean, wow, no one said I mean. A'udhu Billah. More like it. So I said to the brother to work on these three relationships. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherever comes with the deen. Your family, also your relationship with yourself. My dear respected brothers and sisters, man. Ask yourself, are you the clown of your circle? Or are you the man that always reminds of the brother and the sister that's with them? Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you the man that's willing to make an impact upon the brothers and the sisters around them to tell them, bro, it's time to pray? Are you the man that have the guts to say, brother or sister, stop vaping or stop wearing makeup? Pull up your trousers, Ak. Why are you busting low? You understand? With your dusty Primark trousers, I mean, or, or boxes, yeah? What's going on? On top of that, Akhi, tell the sisters, start dressing modest. Tell the sisters if you need to wear hijab because hijab comes in both ways, by the way, yeah? Hijab comes for the brothers and the sisters. 
Brothers, I wear a hoodie, and I'm not talking about that type of hijab, yeah? Let's make it clear, yeah? The hijab of the brothers is how you are dressed, how your character is, how your etiquettes are, how your manners are in and, out, and, and outside the house. That's your hijab for the brothers. I'm not talking about the men that think they can get onto Abu Taymiyyah for wearing the scarf. I'm going to put you down. Abu Taymiyyah is my teacher. So don't ever disrespect Abu Taymiyyah because some people like to diss him you know, online telling him, oh, look at the hijab he's wearing. I dare you to say that to my face. No disrespect to the sheikh, yeah? Catch me outside, as they say. <laughs> and also the hijab of the woman is what? Her good character, her modesty, how she dresses. It's not just the hijab of what you see above the shoulders, you know. It's what she wears underneath. You understand? This is her hijab. This is her modesty. How is she inside the household? Huh? How is she? And wallahi, my dear respected brothers and sisters, you being around good company is also your hijab. That's also your hijab. There was a brother where I'm going to the funeral with the brothers that I came with. I'm going to his funeral tomorrow. A Muslim 16 year old, he came to my talk like this. He sat in the front. We took pictures together. And I'm not looking to take pictures today. Wallahi, I'm too hot. You know what I'm saying? Man's not hot, but I'm hot. Yeah? The brother came. He sat in the front. We took pictures. We spoke. The brother came back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from an Asian background. Allahu Akbar. From an Asian background, where Muslim is in the household. But the family are not even practicing to their best of their abilities. So he started practicing. The family started practicing. There is traits of jahiliyyah in every single household. So let's make that clear, Akhi. Just because I said the family is not practicing, some of my family is not practicing, some of your family is not practicing, to the best of their abilities. The day later, he came in the aid of his friend. There was a little complication. His friend contacted him, said, bro, come down, Akhi. We just got into a problem, and apparently they're going to turn up. And a part of me blames the boys for not leaving the park. They should have left the park. If they, come, if they came across a, a commotion, everybody's carrying a knife now. You need to leave. You need to leave immediately. But you didn't want to leave. But you contacted your boy, and your boy is out of his good heart. The boy that started practicing. The boy that wanted to make a difference because he wanted to come into the aid of his brother decided to come down. 15 minutes later, his friend turns up, the boy's friend turns up. But this boy that he turned up, yeah, he had issues with, they went, they went their separate ways. They're both Muslims. But because they never dealt with their situation, they never squashed their beef for the sake of Allah. When the man turned up out of goodwill, his so-called ex-friend turned up, ballied up. He came off the push bike and put a knife straight in his chest. He punctured his lungs, was it his lungs? He punctured his lungs and his heart at the same time because the knife had two points. So he stabbed him once and he killed him on the spot, Akhi. Inshallah, he dies as a shaheed. And Allah accepts him as a shaheed. But look at the difference he made, bro. He came back to Salah. He came back to the masjid. He was going out of his way to, inshallah wa ta'ala, to start making fajr. Start making, at least making one salah, one salah in the masjid. The boy got killed. All because of the waste men like myself. That when there's beef, we quick to message our boy saying, bro, turn up. And this is what happened the same day I went to jail. My mother saw four of her kids leaving the house that morning and none of us returned. So it reminds me of this story. The story is that when my brother was going home, he was getting messaged by my other brother and his friends. Bro, we bumped into pagans. Akhi, we bumped into pagans, turn up. My brother went home, got the shotgun, came back, ended up getting stabbed because the guy he came down for was hiding behind a bus stop. Stabbed my brother a few times, my brother landed. Now both sides are having a knife fight. And at the same time, my brothers shot up the guy. With his companions, they shot up the guy. All because of a message. 
So my mother saw four of her kids leaving the house that morning. I went to jail. My older brother went to work. My two other brothers came. Uh, both of them got stabbed up and both of them got arrested on, sus on suspicion of attempted murder. My mother for three days didn't see none of her kids. Is this fair for our parents? Put your hands up if you still got your parents. Both of them. Put up your hands, bro. This is what I'm jealous of. You man can still go back home, Akhi. The brother got a bit too excited. He took pride that he still got his parents, alhamdulillah. And you should take pride that you still got your parents, bro. May Allah bless you for that, Akhi. Take pride that you got your parents, Akhi. You go home, Akhi, and hug them and kiss them and be at the service of their feet. Because this is what we need to do with our parents. Look at this man that wanted the title of being the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was around the same time as the companions, yeah? And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He decided while he was in the aid of his mother, his sick mother, bedridden, God knows how bad she was, yeah? But he was in the aid of his mother and at her service at all times, 24 seven. But he said to his mother, I just wanna go and see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So I can get the title of being a Sahaba A Sahaba of the Prophet A companion of the Prophet He decided to travel to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He traveled from Yemen, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. so correct me in this inshallah yeah? He traveled from Yemen all the way to Medina Very long distance Actually there's no cars then bro There's no scooters You understand? He's taking a horse or donkey or camel or walking. So it took him some time to get to Medina. As he landed in Medina, he found out that the Prophet wasallam wasn't even there. But he gave an oath to his mother. He said, I'm going to remain in the city for a few days. If the Prophet wasallam doesn't come back, I am going to make my way back. I am going to make my way back, mother. So he left without seeing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And imagine having this title, it meant so much to him. But he left. He went back to his mother, because you know why? Because he realized that having and being at the service of your mother was bigger than having this title of being a Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he chose to be obedient to his mother more than having this title. How many people have decided to neglect their parents and be in obedience to their friends? We're talking about the Prophet, Akhi, the Prophet. And the man still decided to go back to his mother. I understand, Akhi, you got your mandem around you. I understand you're looking to take out the knife and ride out five, ten years for your boy. But at least go down five or ten minutes down the road to get some groceries with your parents or for your parents. You see, I can't even do that. My beef on road was so severe that not me or my brothers could ever be seen with our parents, bro. Because we didn't want the other side, the opposition, the ops, to know what our parents looked like. So I missed that. And most recently, the last few weeks, I mentioned it quite a few times. Oh, wallahi, I miss my mum, man. My mother died not too long ago. Allah alham, Allahumma ameen. She died the first time she ever went to Umrah and she died in the house of Allah in Mecca. At the age of 56 years old. I had plans for her, bro. I had plans of changing the world for her. I had plans of bringing the world at her feet. But my mother had other plans. And her plans were to be in the state of ibadah 24-7 of her time. Wallahi, I remember my mother saying, I am, I hate going to sleep because I feel like I'm losing out on the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At times during summer, I used to see my mom in the garden, in the garden at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the night, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said, Mom, what are you doing? Get back in the house. You could do this in your house. My mother used to say, Amen. I understand there isn't nothing above, so there's nothing below, you know, above me 
in connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but I wanted to be out in the open where there isn't even a ceiling that is stopping me in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is our mothers man this is the mother that you neglecting at home akhi. this is the mother that you only salam when you do what? when you're coming home or when you want something and I said this yesterday your parents are not like an airport where you only land back to them in a state of emergency your parents are not like an airport bro because I miss every single thing about my mother but it is time for you to make a difference with them bro 22 years old boy that came to my talk one day he said to me, in 22 years, I've never hugged or kissed my mother. 22 years, bro. The Prophet wasallam lost his father before his birth. He doesn't even know what his father looked like. And the Prophet wasallam on top of that, only lived six years of that experience of his mother. Because his mother died at the age of six years When he was six years old And you're telling me your burden Of your trials and your tribulations Is worse than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I'm going to fix up bro But I'm going to leave you with one ayah Insha'Allah And this is an ayah that my mother used to recite a lot And now I recite it a lot And the ayah is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. قال إنما أشكو بثي وحزني إلى الله. I only complain of my grief or my worries to Allah. أخي you got a girlfriend problem, you got addiction problem, you got you got you got you got an, uh, 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 um, a zani problem, you got a trapper. أخي whatever it may be, أخي I don't care. You take a thousand steps away from Allah, it takes one step to come back to Him. You got a girlfriend, Akhi Dumper, if you really trust and love and care for your deen. Do that, Akhi. And, you, and, you, and if you are the girlfriend of that man, Akhi, dump him. Turn back to your, Akhi, turn back to your Lord. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for you. He didn't go anywhere. You see, Allah gave you this deen, whether you liked it or not. But be blessed to live by it. Be blessed to have yourself known as a Muslim. That Allah gave you this deen. So I'm going to tell you, move away from that. Turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed, Allah huwa ghafoor rahim Allah is the most merciful and the most gracious. And Allah will there be there. Listen and listen to this, Akhi. Allah, the third, the third part of the night, the third part of the night, any time before Fajr, Allah comes down to the lowest heaven and he speaks to his servants Ya ibadi He's labeling you as you belong to him He doesn't say, oh servants He goes, no, no, no He goes, he goes Ya ibadi He's putting emphasis on that you belong to him Which one of you are here To ask for anything And I'm there to give it to him When was the last time you did Qiyam al-Layl? When was it bro? Come back to the deen of Allah Come back to the deen of Allah Even if it means you start praying once a day At least that's a start And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said The difference between us and the non-believers is salah I'm not here to call you a kafir But some man say I don't need to pray my heart, is, my, my heart is very good My heart is very very good Shut up man With your lahya You're telling me your heart is good When you can't give, even give five minutes to your Lord Five minutes to your Lord in salah Are you telling me your heart is good akhi? Your heart is sealed akhi. It's sealed And it's not remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For a very long time So I'm going to ask you this My dear respected brothers and sisters that what I, No matter what trials and tribulations That you're going through I'm going to take this Take this from me inshallah One thing that made me get over My trials and tribulations Is giving sadaqah Wallah al adim Even if it's a pound a day or a pound a week As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated It's the small acts that you do 
that is consistent, that are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do that, inshallah. If you're married and you've been trying for a child and the child hasn't come because of whatever reason, akhi given sadaqah. If you want the job that you want, that you, you, you really strive for, akhi given sadaqah. You want to turn away from these trappers and the music and akhi given sadaqah. Listen to the Quran. Come to the masjid and listen to your local imam. Because I'm no alim. Your local imam Ali sacrificed his time for this deen. So therefore listen to him. And one more thing, inshaAllah wa ta'ala. Understand this. That I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything I have said, is anything good that I have said is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Anything bad that I have said is from myself and the cursed shaitan. And instead of you making little videos of me, refuting me online, Akhi, come and inform your brother. Akhi, Amin, you've made a mistake and I would listen to you. We have become a nation of refuting other people. And stop pointing fingers out for others. I love you all for the sake of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of you. And just remember that just because you closed the door on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy has never ever closed. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, yeah, brothers, brothers. Don't, hold on, don't forget. Wallahi, and listen, I'm going, inshallah, I'm going to be there on the 6th of August. Yeah?